everyone, my name is Victoria Tocca and today we are premiering Tocca Talks, a show where I will be interviewing musical theater people, everything from singers, dancers, choreographers, directors, producers, you name it. And for our premiere show, I am very excited to present to you Christina Love, currently playing Tina in Tina the Musical in Hamburg, Germany. Well, it's the premiere show, so you need premiere clothes. Absolutely. Oh Is God. that a dress? No, it's a, a top, actually, and I'm wearing pants on the bottom, like tight It's pants. really pretty. Thank yeah, you. I, I have a dress on, but then I have like fluffy slippers. Oh, me too. You want to see my slippers? Yeah. They're emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So welcome to the premiere <laughs> show of Toka Talks, Christina Love. Oh, thank I'm, you for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. Um, we got connected through a mutual friend, Anna mm -hmm. Turian. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I was trying to Google you the other day to um, get more information before this interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, you've done quite a lot of things. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I've been all around. It's so funny. Um, when I got cast in the role as uh, Tina in the Tina Turner musical in Germany, people asked me, they were like, where have you been this entire time? Yeah. I'd be in interviews and I'd be like, I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> you just haven't looked at me because I haven't been in the front, you know, so it's right. been really, really cool, really uh, a fun ride. Um, mm. Very fun ride. Yeah. 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 But to take a step back, you're from America. I am. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as far as I've been able to read and from what we've talked about, you have sung a lot of both like gospel music and mm -hmm. you're also classically trained is that correct yes so i started singing at the age of two at my church choir uh -huh. it's just i uh, grew up around music my mother sang with lots of choirs and i grew up around gospel legends and that was really a cool a great school growing wow. up um but uh, after my mother moved to Houston, mm. um, after my parents uh, split, we um, got into d different schooling there. So I was in more, more inner city schooling in, in Cincinnati, where I'm, where I was born. And after my parents split, my mother had a new start, and we just moved to Houston. And it was really a new lease on life for me. Mm. And uh, they had better after school programs, uh, better um better academic programs yeah period um and so i was able to get into choir and i started classically training at the age of 11 wow. and uh represented the state of texas in a national choir that year so that was pretty oh, cool wow. a national girls choir oh that's fun um, it was really fun and yeah um then the first song i ever sang outside of my language was in german <laughs> really so, yeah that's really, funny really funny <laughs> you trained in musical theater is that right i did i went to the university of oklahoma mm -hmm. oh you boomer sooner <laughs> <laughs> so okay. how, like how come you um got into musical theater was there any particular reason or did it kind of just happen? Well, it kind of just happened upon me. So one of my really dear friends from choir, mm. um, Adam Turner, uh, he was sent Shout by the theater out. teacher to come get me. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, so I had won the talent show at my high school my freshman year. Oh, really? I, mm -hmm. Did you sing? What did you sing? 
I sang uh, If I Ain't Got You uh, <laughs> by Alicia Keys. Oh. <laughs> and my best friend, my male best friend played the piano for me. It was really cool. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. So uh, one of the theater teachers saw me. Mm -hmm. uh, I had always done choir and stuff. So I was still actively choiring, but uh, choiring as if it's a verb, <laughs> as if it is a verb. Um, it is now. I made it up, okay? It's like my mom, she's a teacher. She's like, I'm an educator. I can make things up. Um, <laughs> I love that, actually. I make up words all the time. <laughs> yeah, so um, she sent him to go get me. And so I auditioned with like the Star Spangled Banner or something like that. Oh. But I was still at the same time, I was a jock. So I played basketball. I ran cross country. Oh. I was like very, I love sports. So Are you tall? I'm like, not. I'm no, not at all. I, I, I was a forward videos. guard. Because <laughs> okay. I look at videos of you online and I'm like, she looks like petite. No, I was just a no. forward guard. So I passed the ball to the tall people and, you know, Got they... it. <laughs> But I was very quick. So, um, yeah, we were on a really good team, actually. So I had to choose between um, my championship bound basketball team and mm. doing the musical. And my mom, she made me do it. She was oh. like, listen, my mom, she went, Christina, you've been singing since you were two. I want to see you in the musical before you graduate. And I was like, Ugh. okay, and crying, going to my team, being like, I can't play with y'all this year. Oh. And then it ended up being the best decision of my life because my high school was nominated for a high school version of the Tony Awards. Oh, wow. Um, and so they did my number at the ceremony. So the presenters that year were Kathy Rigby and Jennifer Holliday. The year before they Whoa. had like Felicia Rashad and Debbie Allen. Um, so basically the award shows in these cities are named after the Broadway stars that come from those cities. So, okay. and they usually try to get hometown talent to come and present. Right, right. So, uh, the Philharmonic was playing for us as well. It was just really Whoa, that's nuts. big. Yeah. It was huge and, um, and it's televised as well in Houston. So. I got on stage and I literally had like an out of body experience and I I, bet. I was like I was sh shaking on the inside and I was performing but I was still there it was all very dreamlike but I remember thinking god I don't want to do anything else but this and like since then I didn't do anything else <laughs> other what than was, that What was the show you you were doing like what was the song you performed at this award show it's so funny so it's uh biggest flame fool from susicle the musical oh so that was my first musical so they needed a girl who could come sing like the aretha franklin stuff and i was like okay i can do that and um yeah so i ended up <laughs> I ended up doing that in, uh, in the United States. It's really cool because you can go to um, universities and, and study different disciplines and things like mm -hmm. that, as well as a part of your degree. And so um, our school as well was invited to an international festival and okay. we performed the Pirates of Penzance. Okay. Uh, an opera, which is really cool to, to do. And so, uh, yeah, so we did that. And at that same festival, you can audition for the top universities in the United States. And so the following year, I went back, I got my feet a little wet and looked around. And then the following year, went back, auditioned for 50 universities, got called back for about 20 some, and then narrowed it down to my top few. And, and, um, Actually, one of the alumni from my high school was sent to go recruit me back at my high school oh. from the university. So the head of the department at the University of Oklahoma was like, make sure she's able to come to auditions. We're really interested in her. So, yeah. And OU was the only school that my mom and I could afford to go to uh, outside of the state uh, with all of my commitments in high school as well. Um, so yeah well, it sounds like it worked out pretty well though so it did. you know <laughs> congratulations Thank you. but then uh when i was reading about you yesterday mm -hmm. i was um like did you play a lot of musicals in america before going to germany 
uh, most of the musicals that I did in the United States were doing summer stock. Okay. Um, which is like, I would say in Germany, it's like Stadttheater, but um, yeah, in the States you have people, you have directors and people from Broadway come in and while you're a university student, you can audition, you can even be leads, play next to them, or you can be in the ensemble. So it's a really cool way of um, making that connection, even though you're not in the space yet. Um, right. So yeah, and I, I assume did. assume like also mm-hmm. building your, um, you know, CV up and, and oh. just experience in general. I mean, I feel like, and this is something that I talked young um, performers about, and I know you and I talked about it briefly on the phone, mm-hmm. but they are in such a rush mm-hmm. out there. And I think that, and I mean, I was the same. So mm-hmm. um, we have no patience. <laughs> and Man. you are never as you know talented and amazing as you are when <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. you know you go and you see professional shows. extra light for that <laughs> <laughs> no but like you know you go and you watch professional shows and you're like oh I could totally do that lead way better like listen honey yeah I mean I was amazing <laughs> when I was like 24 simply the um, best. yeah <laughs> um, so um I just think you know that's such a, a great thing that you do in America but with the the summer stock and and people sort of both um professionals and um younger people in their sort of um educational road to becoming professionals working together and learning from each other Mm -hmm. and I suppose that's because you have a much longer uh, musical theater tradition in America Mm -hmm. I mean it's still rather new in Europe I would Mm -hmm. say maybe they're further along in England but Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're catching up in Mm -hmm. Scandinavia and Germany as well are definitely the last like 20 years, there's a lot of things, you know, happening in both uh, Germany and Scandinavia in terms of musical theater. But, um, you know, like America is really where it all started. Exactly. And so you have, I mean, you've come just so much further in terms of, um, you know, different programs and people learning from each other. And we also spoke briefly on the phone about um, the Broadway community Yes, that although I mean, I'm in no way part of it. Um, when I've been to New York, which I have been several times, I've still felt invited into that environment because I do work with musical theater. And that's such a lovely thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a huge family. That's one thing that I'm really uh, glad about during my university education is that they literally told us they they emphasized they said you are sitting in the room with the next directors producers choreographers and performers like yeah literally these are your these are your allies these are the people you're going to call when you when you need something like and these are the people that are going to keep the tradition going right so it wasn't I'm really glad that I didn't go to a school where it was like dog eat dog and competition because it was very competitive because we all were on a high level of course but the most important thing is community right. like you have to be the director has to want to be in the room with you mm-hmm. <laughs> the choreographer right. has to yeah. want to be in the room with you and and one thing that's so special that you see <clears throat> in the community is this banding together, this camaraderie, the spirit of keeping the tradition alive. And mm. I think that's so important to emphasize as you are, as you're you're growing as an artist, um, it's so important. And I'm seeing it now, a lot of my best friends, they're now the people that are, you know, the ones at the top and they're chore- choreographing and they're, you know, doing really yeah. amazing work and and um and we're they're still people like you know it's it's 
it's it's amazing um, that yeah. you connect with people on a on a personal level, and that that gives the freedom for the magic to happen. It's exactly. not sticky and transactional, so you can get what you want and I can get what I want. You know, it's I think people connect more with with connecting with someone on a personal level. So yeah, yeah that's really, really, really amazing and and so important. Um, your reputation is everything. Yeah, everything. But I mean, I would also like to say that, um, especially in the beginning of my career, you know, I was really focused on being the person that they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, now being older and having done this for a longer time, I also feel like they have to be the people that I want to work for or the people that I want to collaborate with, because that's essentially what we're doing it's a collaboration um you know a lot of directors and producers i mean i, I produce myself now I, we we tend to uh work with uh, a lot of the same people um a lot and when i was younger i didn't understand why and i felt left out and it was frustrating but once you get older and especially when you step back and and start doing the production side of things mm -hmm. as well you realize why and here's the why for me it's um it, a lot of risk and a lot of money to produce a show um mm -hmm. and you want to work with people who you know are going to be there on time they're going to know their stuff they're going to be fun to work with you know it's a really hard process to get to a premiere everyone's going to be super stressed there's going to be like so much tension you know as well as all the fun obviously but you need sort of the people with you who's going to do this together as a team and as a group and exactly what you just said like your reputation or the way you work with people is probably going to affect whether you get a job or not more than your actual performance at one particular audition absolutely I mean, right? <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like it's... maybe your, your first audition uh, for a person, I mean, obviously you want to perform well or do a good job, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's not what's going to get you. It might get you the first job, yeah. you know, but this is, this is a marathon. It's not, you know, like the hundred then... meter Olympic run, <laughs> you know what Amen. I mean? absolutely there's lots of hills and valleys there's lots of different terrain that you have to cross and mm. like you said it's so important I am I'm playing Tina today because yeah. of the shows that I've done for the last nine years yeah. you know so when when you were saying um when you were saying yeah you've actually done quite a lot it's like yeah and it and I started from not being on stage every night I started from being you know the one that that was over in the corner writing and, you know, try following people and shadowing people and um, then having to jump in and, you know, not be, it's, a, it's sometimes a thankless job when you're growing up and when you're growing up in that, but it's okay because you're doing it for the love, right? Of course, right. you know, um, you gotta, it, I, you gotta have the character as well. It's about endurance, right? So mm. um, the disciplines that I developed as a swing as a walk-in, as a cover, yeah. have equipped me to be the leading lady that I am today. Yeah. Um, Amen. Because I don't need anybody to tell me you need to make a Bible for your show. Like, mm. uh, duh. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what okay, I'm saying? So like, for, or... the people, or for the people who maybe are not in our business or for the mm. young performers that don't know can you explain what a bible is like a show bible so like a show a show bible it will go through you'll have a picture of i usually get them from the stage manager i'll have a picture of the set and the numbers in the show and how they designed it all and uh i'll draw in all the numbers um it, it gives you like a road map it's like a road map Right. So your roadmap is the, sh the, the, the goal is the show and the Bible is the roadmap to the finished product. It's the right. blueprint. So you, I would go in scene by scene, 
um, number by number and meticulously write down where I was, um, where I exited uh, my journey. Uh, and yeah, and that is yeah, how I, think I gotta... One of the things that people forget, especially if you haven't worked in this business, is that at least half the show goes on behind the stage. Oh my God. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, there is so much going on that, I mean, obviously you're not supposed to see as the audience because that's the theater magic. But I remember getting my, well, it was my second big lead, but um, I did Christine in Phantom of the Opera. Amazing. And I mean, like after a show of Phantom, I was exhausted because of all the running the quick changes like you have to run under stage in this like <laughs> 50 pound dress yes it's like you, know, and like, you have to make it look so graceful it's so yeah, you're like <laughs> up the stairs and out and you know sing like an angel and then like out and you have like eight <laughs> seconds to change into the next costume it's like a pit stop and, you know oh my god but, you know and it's like all these crazy things happen behind the stage and then you walk on and you're like oh <laughs> listen that is the magic of what we do my one of my of my first voice teachers at university she was like I want you to watch the legends and she had me watch all of them and she was like they make it look so easy don't mm. they and I was mm. like yeah absolutely but what you don't see they can make it look easy because of everything that goes behind it so that's oh exactly what you're saying like yeah it's, it's so <laughs> have you it's seen just... have you seen you all probably have but the, there is a video from one of the tony awards where um kelly o'hara does the quick change for the king and i because she's singing this big number um she walks off stage you know like a queen and then all these things happen. It's like, I, I don't know. There's like, there is not much time. Yeah. Then, you know, just like not one single thing can go wrong because then, you know, it all falls apart. Obviously she makes it. Um, but the funny thing is that they're filming backstage as well. So you can Amazing. see this. And then she walks on stage right on time for, um, for the next, like they had made, uh, you know, like a compilation of songs yeah. from the King and I for the Tonys. Yeah. And, but it's a really cool video to just get sort of a behind the scenes experience of what musical theater magic is, you know? Yes. Can I put a pin here? So uh, one of the things that I really love about, about my education was we had to do everything. Mm. So we, had to make costumes, we had to take costume construction, we had to learn makeup, we had to learn stagecraft, we had to learn lighting, we had to dress someone in a show that was a part of our, that was a part of our education, that was a yeah. part of making sure that we really learned all the different aspects of what it took to make what we do. Mm. And so as you're saying, it's a teamwork, it's, it's literally teamwork. And so, um, one thing that they that is, is so important as well they were like yeah we don't want you yelling at your dressers we no. don't want you screaming at people backstage uh -uh. we don't want you thinking you're better than anyone because that person is the person that makes it possible for you to get on stage exactly. every night um so uh i think it's really important as you're growing as an artist mm. to realize that you're not the most important part. You know what I'm saying? You're not the most important no. part of this, this equation. It's no. you are a product of years of hard work, brainstorming, education, meditation from the, the composers, the writers, like, the, and, 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 and the crafting of the costume constructors, the, you are a product. We are all one unit functioning and flourishing together yeah and um I think it's really important like you were just saying like the magic that happens backstage on stage is only because of what happens exactly. backstage right so everyone is just as important and I know it seems like such a cliche thing everybody's important but everybody really is important um yeah. and really looking at those experiences and, and and what you see on stage is only because of 
what happened backstage. Yeah. So um, I'm curious to know how you ended up in Germany. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> like, how did that happen? The million dollar question. So right. my... <laughs> no, I mean, I worked in Germany too. Yeah. So I, I mean, it happens, but I'm just curious. What was your like journey to Germany. Oh my gosh. So one of my professors at the University of Oklahoma is my hero and believes in us so much. And um, he met um, one of the head casting uh, directors, Ralph Shadla, at, um, in, while he was in Hamburg doing an international musical theater workshop okay. and uh, teaching at a, a workshop. And um, And so I've seen this man walk up to the big wigs in New York and he's like, my kids are the best in the nation. You need to see them. Like, he's just that, like, (laughs) he's just that type of dude. And I love him. And uh, so I imagine that's exactly what he did with Ralph. And so, yeah, the guild got together. They helped to raise money to get Ralph over to to, uh, America, to our university. Uh, he saw us doing one of our, our musicals there and yeah and then he uh, recorded some videos we auditioned for him he sent them back to Germany we saw him again when we were doing our big audition trip in New York when we were auditioning for agencies and mm. uh, yeah and and from that he sent back over about I think 150 or so pages of German material to some of us I'd never yeah, I sang arias and things like that in German, of course, right. but speaking and doing, it's totally different. So when I came over here <laughs> to audition, I was like doing Brahms R's for yeah. like, and one of the guys is like, I can see you have a different music vocabulary <laughs> because of the way you're singing this, but it's more of a uvular R as opposed to a, you know, with the tongue, a dental R. And I was like, Oh no. So basically oh. get those Brahms R's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you live it was, learn. Yeah, but I mean, I ended up getting a job, which is awesome. So yeah. it didn't stop that. So So what was your first uh, job in Germany? Dirty Dancing Das uh. Musical in Oberhausen, Germany. I was a walk-in mm-hmm. cover uh and i also in the end ended up da- in the dance ensemble like singing, oh, okay. singing in the dance ensemble so yeah did you speak any german at all before going there absolutely not no. <laughs> i spoke <laughs> no german whatsoever um could phonetically read it though because right. of the classical training that i had So yeah, I had to learn every, if the first day was like, jump in the cold water, here we go. Let's do this. I remember that feeling. My first uh, big job was, I mean, I was classically trained and Mm -hmm. uh, so I did the Ludwig musical in Füssen, Ah. the original. (gasps) I love Füssen. Oh, wow. So I was... um, ensemble and um alternate cc oh beautiful Uh, so that was like my first big job and uh i remember it so well because i knew like no german and uh, (laughs) you're like yeah and oh and you were in bayern so (laughs) i know i know (laughs) but the funny thing is that i i think i mean i was so young um but I think they were really helpful and friendly to me and and, um, because also a lot of like the local people for some reason, it it was like they adopted me. (laughs) I don't know. That's amazing. And and it was, um, I mean, one thing that I both love and hate about Germany is that at least then um, all their TV shows were uh, dubbed into German Mm -hmm. um, with German voiceover. Right. Um, so it's horrible when you just want to watch TV, right. but it's yeah. a really good way <laughs> to learn the language. Yeah. Um, and so I think in about like three months, I was speaking it, you know, well enough to do the show and to mm-hmm. get around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's something definitely I did too. That's one thing that my colleague suggested to me, just yeah. watch TV. I didn't have TV in Oberhausen, but as well, I, I tried to, uh, surround myself with German speakers. Like I really 
didn't just want to um, hang out with the people that only spoke English. And I was sometimes a little like, you know, I was like, hey guys, we're in Germany, let's speak German, let me learn. You know, <laughs> they, yeah. they wanted to improve their English. So I'm like, that's awesome, but. <laughs> that's great, but we're in Germany. I'm the one who needs to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're not in England or America, we're in Germany. So it's imperative yeah. that I learn this language, so. Was Tina your first lead in Germany? Yes, Tina was my first first cast lead role. Um, oh, up that's to that time cute. I always covered and uh, understudied and alternated, alternated. See, I'm making up words. It's great. Fantastic. <laughs> You're acquiring and alternating. I'm acquiring and alternating. <laughs> Alternating is a word. That is a word, though. So, mm. Alternating and uh, covering and all that kind of stuff, that also prepares you for the real deal when it happens. I mean, for me, it kind of happened quite fast because, as I said, I was sort of an alternate CC when I came in. I think I can't say that I've really worked as an understudy or, mm -hmm. you know, I've always had the luxury of... Um, having you know enough rehearsals not for phantom uh, because i <laughs> because i had to um long story short um the phantom had already run for a year uh when i came to the show and so the woman who was leaving was going to do an opera in denmark and my first day um of rehearsals i got called to the um office and i was super scared because I was like oh god I'm getting fired on the first day what did I do what oh did I do? <laughs> no it's always the worst thing that could I ever know. happen if you're like, I'm like I'm done oh. <laughs> and, uh, I come up to this office and the the theater director he's like so um Susan needs to leave uh, as soon as possible so can you have your premiere in 10 days and I was like sure I can <laughs> And wow. so like my first day of rehearsals was like on stage in like not full costume, but like I had to just like get it done. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but other than that, I've had the luxury of having like my own scheduled rehearsals that's been for me because correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're an understudy or a cover uh, or a walk-in, you're sort of shadowing the the rehearsals a lot is that correct yes you are doing that a lot yeah, yeah. they do have understudy rehearsals uh, I, I remember uh for hunchback of notre dame when i when i covered esmeralda they just want to make sure it's covered because you never know up until opening night what might happen um so uh after everyone had left so i'd have rehearsal from 10 to 6 and then to 8 <laughs> i you know, I'd have a little small break and then I'd go and I'd do dance rehearsals yeah. until uh, eight o'clock or whatever. Um, so it just depends on the production and, and what role you're covering and how. But um, yeah, sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> you just got to yeah. learn it and go. And if you're swinging, which I have done as well, you just... Yeah. Can you explain to be, yeah. a, you know, what it is to be a swing for the people who might not know what it is? Yes. So to be a swing means, uh, depending on the show, you need to make sure that you're well acquainted, that you know, basically, you cover every single part in the female or male ensemble, depending on if you're a male or a female swing. So you need to be able to jump in. Yeah. You need to be able to know the show back and forward by heart um sometimes even cross uh male and female roles as well mm -hmm. to know what's going on uh on stage at any time so you can jump in just in case that is needed and I think that I'm so glad I had the opportunity to do that but that is one of the hardest jobs it, but I it's can so only fun imagine. it makes me scared just listening to that uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I don't know I mean, it keeps you on your feet, definitely. Definitely keeps yeah. you on your feet. You never get bored. Never get bored. Um, In what, what show were you a swing? Rocky. Uh, mm. I did Rocky 
uh, as a swing. And that was a really uh, a crazy experience too, because I had, they had specific tracks and they didn't want certain tracks to be covered by certain people, but then you get to running a show and things happen. Right. So I ended up having to learn a role within four hours. Oh my God. And my dance captain was on stage and she would come off. She would teach me the numbers in between, (laughs) in between the numbers that she was not on. And good thing I, I, I loved the show. So I followed it. Like I always, I watched the show every night after we opened, I was just really like a fan of the show. So Mm -hmm. I, I was really well acquainted with it, but she was teaching me little things in, you know, in between the numbers that she was on and Mm -hmm. off stage. And I got fitted for costumes in the middle. I was wearing people's stuff. I was like, what is this? (laughs) <laughs> great just put me in it That's you know crazy, you know um because I had to go on in the evening so that was really that's the that's the life of a swing uh yeah. well, sometimes you have to play male roles as well or you know step mm. in for a male or well yeah. you can't be you know scared that's for sure it's just like let's jump yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and when you know the show and when you've when you've taken the time to really study it and when you're in this crash course of learning a piece, it's actually really, really fun. Like I really loved swinging. I really loved it. It was really crazy at times, <laughs> but was so fun. And I, I, I remember bowing after that show and being like, I have no idea what happened. <laughs> like I literally have no idea. <laughs> it's one of those things where you're just like a zombie and you just move from like, yeah. Place, like I was mind. there, but I don't know what I was <laughs> I doing. I have no recollection of anything that I did on stage. No one died. Everyone that's was good. happy. So I, I did my that's job. <laughs> a successful job right there. No one died. <laughs> yes. Amazing. So okay, let's move on to Tina, the musical. Tina Turner. Yay. I love uh, her so much. <laughs> yay. I am um, <laughs> Uh, going to show them a clip of you in oh. the show. Big wheel, keep on turning. Proud, there keep on burning. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. Das hättest du wohl gern, was? Dass du solo da oben stehst. Ich wollte sein Geld nicht, nur meinen Namen. happen I mean obviously I'm assuming there was a lot of auditions um, yes since it it's the original German production is that correct yes exactly yeah Yeah, it was the first production after the world premiere in London and uh, first foreign language production so yes it was it was quite a so thing like did you know a lot about Tina Turner before this? I grew up watching the film What's Love Got to Do With It. Wow. Uh, and also, I think as an African-American woman, like Tina Turner is just like, she's a national treasure. She yeah. really is. And so um, as a as a Black woman, she was someone that I was like, wow, she's a powerhouse. She's absolutely incredible. And the story that she had was just so so inspirational and so um life-giving and so um yeah funnily enough looking back yeah always kind of talk this up (laughs) in a way I remember (laughs) being in uh college in the cafeteria and and Beyonce and Tina were performing at the Grammys and they were showing it and I was like guys could y'all imagine if there was a Tina musical and like I'm like oh you better cast me because I'm tired. Cause literally she's all over the place. You know, she's running, she's yeah. singing, she's giving you everything. And you so know, how was her. it going into like the first audition for this show, which I imagine you really, really wanted to be part of. I'm going to give you the honest, I, yes, the honest thing, because I have, I was at a point where 
I didn't believe that I would be able to do anything. I really wanted it, but I have been in many auditions and had been to the finals and never the first choice or, mm. you know, or um, been right for a show type wise, but not get past the first or the second round and not knowing why and these sorts of things. So uh, at a, at this point in my career, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to go in and see what happens. (laughs) You know, I just, I, 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 uh, I poured myself into it, of course. And I decided after the first round that I got through, um, I didn't want to keep myself from really wanting this. So I, I love researching. I love doing character work, doing auditions. So I do lots of like stories and backgrounds and I make I make up a story so I can really get into the moment when I'm in my auditions. And, Mm. and so, uh, I, I decided how amazing that this woman has two books that I can literally pick up and read Mm. and, and get to learn about her. And that can infuse, that can imbue my performance uh, of, of her in my auditions. So I really, I, I bought her autobiography, her first one, I, Tina, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a series of interviews with Ike, her mother, her sister, her sons, like it, it, and, and her, herself, it's, it's just such, it was such a nice um, testament of her life Mm. up until um, the private dancer tour, Mm. which is where the show stops, um, which is perfect. (laughs) Um, So I really got into it and I, and when I um, was studying the sides, I I tried to imagine what she was feeling or why she reacted a certain way in a certain moment. And uh, I really let myself want it. Um, yeah, however, um, I released it. And, and funnily enough, on my the final callback, I had to break up a vacation that I had had uh, to come back for the final, mm. which was fine. Um, but I was really, you know, in an eight show week rhythm and I was just mm. exhausted and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll just, I'll come back, you know, it's, it, let's just do it. And so I was in California. Um, so I'd wake up, I woke up at four in the morning. I remember one day to, to work through sides with my friend in Austria. <laughs> she was so sweet. So it's like the middle of the day for her. And it was like four in the morning and I was, going through the scenes and you know did the best I could but really let myself rest into it and um yeah and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong on the way back to the final missed flights medical emergencies on the plane like literally lost my phone in the airport just like so much spent my last literal euros to get a flight to get to Hamburg from the city where I was in um yeah but it it was it was definitely definitely a god thing like it it was it was destiny and I see that and I see that I while I was on vacation I was at like a, a conference and and I got a really amazing word um of encouragement and prophecy from a guy who was like I see promotion coming to you from a king in your industry oh he was like I see promotion coming to you from a king in your industry I didn't know this man and he was like and it's gonna come through your voice stranger like you know and I'm like whoa right before my final and one of my best friends is standing next to me it's just like ah, ha, 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 like laughing and I'm like oh my gosh this is crazy um so I went in being jet lagged having traveled yeah over 24 hours like to get back to Germany from California with that awareness and also just with releasing what I had because there was nothing literally all I I gave everything I had because (laughs) that was all I could do there was no extra there was no Mm. uh yeah and my audition wasn't perfect it was me Mm. um and it was authentic and I think Uh, that is the real lesson that I've learned. And that's what Tina has taught me. That's what my life up until this point has taught me is that, um, yeah, I was teaching a group of girls this this weekend and I told them, I said, don't leave yourself at the door. 
don't leave yourself at the door because who you are is relevant and it's necessary mm. for the story that needs to be told. Let yourself be seen. Let yourself give yourself the freedom to be accepted, to be, you know, to, to be tasted. Mm. You know, we know if we like something because we taste the flavor. And just because we don't like the flavor of something doesn't mean it's not a good dish. It just means it doesn't fit to our palate. Right. Um, but it's allowing ourselves in vulnerability to share the story. And so that was all I could give. And funnily enough, Tina got married on my mom's birthday. Oh. I met her on my birthday. And they yeah, announced I would be her. playing Tina on my dad's birthday. Oh, wow. It was written. It so was written. How was it like... Did you receive a phone call? I did. So it was funny because my phone, my phone died. I literally came home mm -hmm. and collapsed because I was like, oh, this is crazy. So uh, I came home and woke up at like noon the next day because I was still California time somehow. So it was still in the middle of the night. So I turned on my phone and realized that I had a missed call from from Hamburg, from Stage mm. Entertainment, because I was living mm -hmm. in Stuttgart at the time. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I- <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. So I call back and then uh, Ralph Shadler answers and he's like, Christina, we'd like to let you know that you've gotten the role of Tina. Even And I jumped ah! on my bed. I broke the Lattenrüste, like- <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> but I mean, it was a little cheap bed anyway. But I literally like was like, ah! broke the bed like screaming all of the things um and it was just so incredible I I mean I'm really glad that I mean I knew that I was in the room with excellence but I'm really glad I didn't google Philida before <laughs> the director <laughs> before because I was like oh she's just you know, the director of the Iron Lady with Meryl Streep. And I'm just in a room with a woman that has shared creative space with all of these people that yeah. I love and adore. And I was just able to just receive her. You know, I yeah. don't recommend not being researched when you come in the room, but I think for Sometimes me, it was thing, <laughs> to just take people as they are. So it was just so nice. So, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it was just really awesome and then the day that they had recommended uh tina meet me uh the week was the week of my birthday and i wrote the um, publicity team i was like hey guys so my birthday is that week <laughs> you know my birthday <laughs> and so they're like cool we'll write tina and alvin her husband and see if you know if that works and yeah they invited me so how was it meeting her Amazing. It was all of the things. Uh, it was a really beautiful hot day in Switzerland. I got on the train from Stuttgart. It was just a few hours. Got mm -hmm. there, met the, the camera team, did some stuff around the, the Hauptbahnhof there, the, the main train station, and then headed over to her um, uh, hotel where we would get ready. And, and then... Um, because they wanted to really film everything, like us really meeting. So they had to have us at two separate locations. So, uh, okay. so yeah, so, uh, so uh, time comes. So I, there is actual video footage. There's of this. actual footage. I will have to find it. Yes. So Put your hands together and welcome our great muse, the mighty Miss Tina Turner. So tonight you'll hear us sing, you will see her. I'm proud now to introduce to you Christina Love. give you all my blessings. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. So, so 
I'm, I go in the, in the gate and they're like, wait, we're not ready. We want to make sure. So let's get your mic on. So I'm literally in Tina Turner's bushes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Getting mic'd because they want to preserve the reality of us. So like, <laughs> they're like putting my mic in my, I was like, this is hilarious. This is so funny. <laughs> so <laughs> put the mic on and everything. And they're like, okay, now we're ready. You can go back. And I went back and I hear a voice that sounds like Mother Earth singing happy birthday to me. Oh, wow. So Tina sang happy birthday to me. Oh. And I was like, I don't need to do anything else. Like, I think that's all I came to Switzerland for. <laughs> Basically, um, yeah. I'm good. So she was so sweet and so gracious and did everything to make me feel comfortable and, and, and welcome. And they wanted me to ask her questions listen she usurped the entire interview she's like where are you from like she just oh. wanted to know everything about me which I think is just a testament to her humility her heart and just who she is as a woman and yeah um and it was so amazing to meet to meet her and to share space with her to perform with her um and to tell her story every night is such an honor did she give you any kind of advice for you know playing her rule number one <laughs> she told me don't imitate me mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like yes ma'am and and to to find myself within her story and mm. to really really dive into that and I think as well you know she looked at me and she told me and I think she could see I, I mean I'm just happy to be in a room like basically because literally the art saved my life and my life would be in a totally different direction if I if I didn't find my tribe, if I didn't find my calling, I don't know mm. where I would be. So yeah. I'm just grateful to just be here with all the people. And she's, she looked at me and she said, Christina, you know, you're the only one that's gonna be charged to do what you have to do every night. Mm. So if you don't like something, say something. And I think that's a huge testament as well from her story yeah. and how, you know, you just, there's an inner compass that you have and you know, you're like, mm, this might not work in the long run. And I can suffer through, like, uh, definitely, you know, mm. there are certain things we just got to roll with the punches, but then there are certain things that are damaging to the soul and to the body and, and those sorts of things. So she really encouraged me to speak up um, as a woman. And, and when I had low times this year, times where I didn't know, you know, what to do, I would remember her telling me that. And, and I would just ask politely for what I needed, yeah. but, but to know that it was okay to ask for what I needed, because when I go on stage, I literally leave empty. I, mm. I, I don't, there is no 50 with me. I'm like, no. what is that? No, it's all or nothing. Mm. And it's, and it's a little bit over a hundred, like, we might not be able to walk tomorrow. It's okay, as long as we can do the show. Right. You know, um, that's that's the type of performer I am. And mm -hmm. and and um and in order for me to do that, I have to just be able to yeah. you know, have an environment that that encourages that and it fosters that. So um how has this past year been after COVID happened? Because now we're all like I'm dressed up like I'm having a premiere today. Listen, <laughs> like, ma'am. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the only premiere I'm having since like a year ago. Yes. And, like, I don't know when I was able to, like, it was, it, it feels like yesterday and like an eternity ago yeah. when <laughs> we were allowed to be on stage. And um, I'm assuming you have sort of a, a similar situation in Germany because of COVID. Definitely, definitely. I've been able to do a couple of online things outside of uh, things in the show, which have been really life-giving and really wonderful. Um, and it's been nice to just share. I remember we did this um, Musical Stars Unplugged concert with some of the stage people and I remember after months of not playing a show and you hear the, the guys and the orchestra behind you. And I just, I had to really like hold back tears the entire time mm. just to feel 
feel the energy of of a of an orchestra of a band behind you to mm. to see your colleagues and we couldn't sing to each other but we were at least inhabiting the same space yeah. uh which was really wonderful you really see what a gift it is to do what we do mm. every day and 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 this time has really been good to just remind me of that because I I think before the lockdown, I was so in a, a rolling mode of, of just working and that I that I was just functioning and I lost the 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 joy for it. It wasn't it wasn't that I didn't give my all every night because I mm. did. I gave that and then some. Mm. But it but it was I kind of lost myself in the middle of everything. I I, I just lived to make it to to 7 30 the next night I just you know and and, right. and so I, I how long did you get to play the show before COVID happened we played a year yeah so, exactly a year and, and did you play yeah. eight shows a week no oh. um so the show that would be I mean you I've done die. I've done seven <laughs> I've done yeah. seven and mm. I couldn't walk for two days after that I'm literally on stage for three hours it's yeah. like we did I'm in 24 numbers in the mm. show mm. <laughs> so it's it's high energy all the time and yeah. and and um we only we only did a rehearsal where we did five numbers and I burned a, a thousand five hundred calories oh God. so I can that just kind of shows you like how yeah strenuous the demand is of the show and so yeah, so I did six and then I went down to five because mm. yeah, it's just a lot. But I did have to do seven and the, and then the seven I had to do double Saturday, double Sunday. Oh God, yeah. So that was that's hard. That was murder. That was literal like Yeah. They sent the paramedic to the side of the stage. Oh, no. <laughs> like they were like, just make sure she's okay when she comes off because she might fall out. Yeah. But I was fine by the grace of God, you know, and yeah. my dresser was there like holding me up, carrying me, you know, and helping me back to my dressing room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've gone down to five just because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of singing. It's a lot of dancing. It's a lot of mm. diving into the, the emotional world of her yeah. life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so five is healthy. Five is five is good. Well, when you're playing a big show like that or a big role uh, like that, it's hard to maintain, especially if you want to maintain like a hundred percent quality to your performance. So yeah. longevity. Yeah. Do you have any uh, idea of when like what what's the status in Germany right now? Do you get any indications of when you might be up and running again? Uh, we're definitely not sure. We mm. are um, uh, taking it day by day. Uh, I don't think that anything's going to happen before spring. I just don't. I, I don't know. I'm not sure because of the, the restrictions. The lockdown's gotten even harder. Mm. Um, mm. Unfortunately, what we do is not seen as relevant to I the know. system which is which really is really crazy I was thinking about <laughs> this morning and it was getting me really fired up because I was thinking about how they talk about the healthcare system being um so important which it is mm -hmm. um it, it's essential but Definitely. I also feel like and especially now when it's gone on for such a long time that I think that we, in all honesty, should be seen as essential too for men mental health reasons. Definitely. But if you have a person who is mentally unstable, ready to kill themselves, are you going to help them more with chemicals in their body or by, you know, like music or singing or what happens in the body when, like, there is something very essential about what we do if you meet people after performance you know they've released so much like tension and endorphins and like it's not just us on stage it's not about us mm -hmm. it's about the people who are watching and the energy that happens in the room between the mm -hmm. audience and the people on stage and i quite frankly think that's essential for mental health 
Definitely. I, I agree with you. There are certain things that you cannot measure. Mm. They are felt. And I think that because we, we try to have either or, or mm. I, I, I have no idea um, where that comes from, but one cannot really measure the depths of the dark night of the soul. Oh. It's felt, mm. it's felt, it's really felt. And, and I think that we live in a creative world. We live in a world that I believe was created. And I think the thing that will help us out of this dark night mm. is creativity. Mm. I mean, think about like the film industry after the second world war, it was like it, it people needed a way to, to believe again. Right. To, to, you know, it, it's, it's the imagination that gives you the ability uh, to rise beyond mm. and it's necessary. Um, and I think people choose pills because it's something they can measure. Right. You know, it's not, it may or may, I, it may or may not work. The pills may or may not work, but at least we did something, Right. you know, and right with, with music or with, with, with a musical or something like that, I think people just aren't able to to really measure that because I don't think they really had the chance or the desire to really explore what what music and what art does to the soul yeah. so is there anything you would like to sort of pass on to younger performers who are because I know that there are a lot of um, younger people who are still maybe uh, at school or mm -hmm. just sort of uh, got out of school straight into COVID and like just to leave them with some sort of advice and hope for the future and uh, um, maybe also welcoming them into our business because I one of the things that I'm trying to do with my YouTube channel is to uh, extend the um, musical theater community, like the, the Broadway community that we talked about in the beginning, um, that I felt I was invited into, although I was never really um, a part of, like I've never performed on Broadway, but just because I'm part of the musical theater community, I was welcomed in there. And so mm -hmm. this is something that I want to do with this interview show and with you know mm. my YouTube channel. So is there anything you would like to say to them before we finish this interview in terms of yeah advice or welcoming them into our community? Hey guys, hey dear ones. Um, I just want you all to know you are some of the strongest people that um, you've had to face so much during this time. You've had to face cancellations, all of your plans being mm just yeah all of your plans being being changed having to to review and and do all of those things and and you guys are resilient you've made it um i just i recommend you guys just uh write write things down we're gonna need what you're processing during this time we're gonna need what you're feeling in this time um, you're stronger than you know, you're more resilient than you know, and you're more powerful than you know. Um, it's going to be a ride, it's going to be a journey, but it will be worth it. And, and just like the rings in a tree, you're going to see the journey and the growth and the development over time. Just believe in that, believe that that um, that you can do it. And, and really um, don't don't get so familiar with the miracle of your existence that you throw away who you are. The fact that you're breathing right now is such an amazing gift. It's literally a miracle and you are, you are just wonderful. So when you're having a bad day and you don't know you can make it, just, just really just press into that. I'm a miracle, I'm alive. And then if all you do and all you can muster the strength to do is to get out of bed and brush your teeth in the morning, kudos to you. And next, the next day you'll be able to shower and get dressed. You know, it, it's just, it's that. Um, but yeah, keep going. 
know that you're so much more than you do. You are a valuable person. And I think that's a great lesson that you're learning now at the beginning that a lot of us learn along the journey is that we're so much more than what we do. So if you're able to have the resilience and the power and the passion to continue after this, you can do anything. And I mean anything. So remember that and know that's all that you need. You have enough. All you have is all you need. That's so beautiful. Well, you know, <laughs> thank you so much for being part of the premiere interview show of oh, my Taka Talks. My gosh, come I'm on, so Taka Talks. Taka Talks. Yes, ma'am. Yay. <laughs> and um, if we're going to put all your information, like your social media handles and everything yeah. in the description of this video. Awesome. Go check out Christina Love, everything she does. If you happen to be in Germany, go see Tina the Musical once they're up and running again. I know I will for sure get a ticket to Hamburg and go and see you. Come on, um, ma'am. Yes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just so excited to have met you although right now it's over zoom yeah but, uh, i'm really really looking forward to seeing more from you hearing more from you and i'm i'm just really excited about this whole connection and thank you for being so gracious in welcoming to like all the young new musical theater people i think they're gonna um really enjoy that um message that you just sent them so thank you so much for being part of this thank you so much for having me Yay. i can't wait to meet you and give you a big old Yay. texas hug Yay. big old texas hug <laughs> it was a pleasure having you thank you so much thank you victoria